Hello, survivors! Welcome to another Silly Saturday! In today's video, we are playing on the Houndmaster. There's been a build I've been wanting to do for forever, uh, and we've actually been struggling to do this one, actually. So we are on Curse of 43 Intensity. I did get rid of the Void Presence as well as the Void Hunters. I just didn't feel like playing with them in today's Silly Saturday. And I th thought maybe let's go and do something a bit more higher Curse Intensity than our usual Curse Zero runs. But for the run, we are playing with six Camor's Arrows. Uh, I just thought it'd be really, really fun to stun the enemies all the time. Each arrow deals of 14,800 damage, which is then divided equally amongst all the enemies. But the bleed damage of 3k is dealt to absolutely every single thing that is hit. So our runes, we are running Misfortune's Embrace, Skill Inclination Projectile to make sure that we do get it. Uh, singular focus and multicast mastery now this is actually like my second or third attempt because i just wasn't getting camel's arrow quick enough uh, it's not very very strong but if you don't get the skills very very quickly in terms of cycle wise uh, you just aren't able to buff them quick enough to get them to do a lot of damage so as you can see uh, we have area wide camel arrows it is beautiful uh, <laughs> and they just knock down absolutely everything around you that is a trash mob. So anything that isn't an elite will get instantly stunned as well as a die very, very quickly. So you don't really have to worry about moving too much. We have a pretty decent cooldown on them, three seconds. Uh, we did actually land up running three bloodlusts until we could find the other three camels arrows. It was terrible. Uh, yeah, I don't know, RNG just wasn't in favor of me today, but uh, luckily we did get it, so we get to showcase the skill and, uh, you know, just have a good laugh at how ridiculous it is. Uh, just to remember, this is High Curse, except for having the Void Hunters and the Void Presence, so at least you know, uh, difficulty-wise, it is up there, and this can get you relatively far if you did want to play with it. This is actually also thanks to the new skill trees and the ascensions. I don't believe Camel's Arrow would have done so much if it was back, uh, you know, in the, the demo or the pro, like, you know, back when it was released in uh, February last year. Uh, sorry, this year, not last year. But back when it was released, it wasn't this strong, and that's thanks to the character skill trees. I mean, you can still see bosses. If we do get hit, we take a whack ton of damage. So we got to try and not get hit. But uh, bosses do get melted pretty quickly, so I'm very happy with that. We are going to focus on a couple of these things. Cast frequency, that's massive. Area of effect, that is beautiful. Bleed to poison, the skill does bleed, so getting more poison is great. We do have Misfortune's Embrace, so we don't really need it. But it is very, very nice to have anyway, just for that little bit of extra damage. Alrighty, what else do we have here? I would have liked to have been in the caves or somewhere a bit more exciting. Although this is pretty good, the enemies over here aren't walkovers. The Whispering Woods or Whispering Forest did get an update when the event came down. So actually it's kind of ironic that we're in this map because this is the map where you do the event to unlock the skill that we're playing with. So the event to unlock it was the Valentine's event. You do have to get, uh, I believe it was actually Camor, but it has to do with Cupid and destroying totems and using all of that to unlock these skills and it has to be on curse intensity 34 but if you're interested in that you can let me know down in the comment section otherwise you, if you've unlocked everything uh, you know pertaining to the skill and the event you can just let me know what other skills you would like to see six of four a silly saturday this one i just thought would be cool to have that huge aoe and the stun going forward so i thought i would do it but you know leave me down a comment in the description, oh, no, in the description in the comment section, so that we can, uh, you know, see what other ideas you all have or want to see done on a silly Saturday. I've had other ideas or you know suggestions given to me for other videos which I am working on, but those aren't silly Saturdays; they're just general videos. So don't expect them to deal, see them on Saturdays, maybe during the week next week. Still also need to work on the Berserker run for God of Weapons. We do have a run with it, but I don't think I was quite happy with it. So we are going to re-record it. Uh, 
I don't know, maybe I need to like open a, a Patreon or something so that these these videos that I don't upload onto YouTube can make their way there. But uh, that's something maybe for when we're a bit bigger or when a lot of more people have interest in that. I don't know, do you guys have interest in Patreon and things like that? Or like a, the membership on uh, YouTube showing that if you're a member of the channel then you get the exclusive content like the behind the scene videos. Uh, maybe the, the failed attempts to the videos that we do or uh, things like that or I don't know just something that we've got in mind over there all right so we're gonna grab the cold over there more cast frequency another cold oh, merciless and magnetic I do like to take as many magnetics as possible especially in the beginning because we are looking for the skills in the beginning and obviously having more levels means more chance of finding the skill because you are able to not only re-roll for it but then you can just keep getting levels and you're going to see more skills in the shop because you're going to be a higher level so I do like seeing magnetics I do like to take them when I'm doing things like this uh, especially with the overlord or the endless runs it also helps you keep up with the XP curve nerf that doesn't mention this one but the further you go with XP, uh, into the cycles the less XP you get uh, per cycle so that's just something we know from the game something we've been told since the beginning and uh, grabbing yourself as many magnetics does kind of help with that but I do think it is kind of impossible to keep up with the curve but trying to keep up with it for as much as possible as long as possible is the idea and we are on our final boss spawns over here so we do have to be careful we can't really uh, stay clo too close to the bosses unfortunately luckily though the the skill has a screen wide aoe so you can see we hit the bosses even if we don't aren't near them uh, there aren't a lot of skills in the game that do this uh, obviously all the stun area ones are like this but there aren't a lot of skills where you can run away from the bosses completely and not worry about not hitting them so uh, besides for minions and a couple of skills here and there this is one of those skills where you can just run away safely not even worry about where the bosses are and you're still hitting them and killing them so and this part over here is like probably the perfect example for this so you can see we're just running around uh, minding our business just dodging all the red circles and the bosses themselves are getting annihilated so final ass incarnation and bam dead and done so it was very very strong very very enjoyable and let me know what you guys thought about it down in the comment section uh let's see the damage over here probably not too high because we are only on overlord cycle 2 1.1 million the dogs did 181 million which is pretty decent but there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And always remember, keep safe survivors. Until next time, cheers.